One of the most requested videos I've had for my channel is to rank every single enemy in Mario Maker 2. That's definitely an understandable request, seeing as I like to rank things, and the enemy section is probably the most diverse of the Mario Maker 2 items. But other people have already made that video, and I already get called a Steve Gaming clone enough, so I've decided to do something else with the Mario Maker 2 enemies. One of my favorite series I've started recently is the Making Spirits for Smash Bros. Ultimate series, so I thought it'd be a good idea to instead try and make a spirit battle for every single enemy in Mario Maker 2. If you don't know what a spirit battle is, it's basically a battle using spirit Smash Ultimate's existing roster of characters, items, and stages to create a battle to represent the character the spirit is for. Luckily for this episode, Mario is one of the most represented series in Smash in terms of spirits, so a lot of the enemies already have spirit battles, so I won't need to make new ones for them. That does bring up the question of what exactly I am considering an enemy. Well, Mario Maker 2 luckily does that for me. Any item contained within the green wheels labeled as enemies will be included, nothing outside of it. Sorry Icicle fans, maybe next time. I'll also be making battles for all alternate forms of enemies as well, so even though the Goomba has one, one, I'll need to make one for the Goombrat as well. I won't be doing any big, winged, or parachute enemies as that'd just be unnecessary. There are two exceptions to that later on, but otherwise that should lay out everything we're covering. After accounting for enemies that already have spirit battles and combining a few enemies into one, we have 45 spirit battles we need to make. As always, I'll get my footage as close as possible to what I'm saying, but there are some conditions I can't recreate, so use your imaginations. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. At 100k, I'll rank every moon in Mario Odyssey, and let's jump right into making a spirit battle for the Goombrat. So as I said, alternate forms are going to be created for this video as well. Now in the case of the Goombrat here, there's not that much of a difference between it and a regular Goomba. The only thing that sets them apart aside from appearance is the fact that Goombrats have one extra brain cell and won't walk off ledges. In order to make the Goombrat spirit stand out, I would retroactively change the Goomba spirit, so let's take a look at that first. This is a horde battle against small DKs on Battlefield Mushroom Kingdom. I think this fits the Goomba pretty well, however if we're going to add the Goombrats, I would make the Goomba spirit take place on Omega Mushroom Kingdom. The reason why is because I would basically transform the current Goomba spirit battle into the Goombrat spirit, with the only changes being the DKs would be in their default costume, and the stage would be Battlefield Mushroom Kingdom U, as Goombrats obviously don't appear in the original Super Mario Bros. Battlefield being the stage is the closest thing I could think of to represent the platforms that Goombrats wouldn't walk off of. Other than that, this would be a novice or one-star spirit. While we're on the topic of alternate forms, we have the Red Koopa Troopa. The green ones already have a spirit battle, and once again, the only change between the two is the fact that Red Koopa Troopas don't walk off edges. So the Red Koopa Troopa fight would be against a Squirtle and his Red Shell alt on Battlefield Golden Plains, for the same reason as the Goombrat. Green shells would also be the only item. There sadly aren't any red shell items anymore, but it'd feel a bit wrong to remove shells in their entirety for being the wrong color. Plus, red shells and green shells act the same in Mario Maker. This would be a novice. Alright, we can finally get to our first fully original spirit with the Buzzy Beetle. Being another shell-based enemy, Squirtle and his dark blue alt was my choice here. There's really nothing else that the Buzzy Beetle does that's too special, so the stage would be Omega Great Cave Offensive to represent the underground, and he'd be a novice. Now since I did say alternate forms would be covered here, I also have to cover the Shellmint. The fighter and stage are the same as the last one, however this Squirtle will spam side special, as that's the move where he'll go into his shell. During the fight, a Thwomp will also spawn. The reason I did this is because the Shellmint's main purpose is to defend you from getting hit from above, so I thought the Thwomp Assist Trophy spawning in here would be a good way to make this battle more unique and also reference the Shellman's main ability. This would also be a novice. I decided to combine the Spike Top and its fast variants as it didn't really seem necessary to keep them separate. They'll be represented by a red and blue Bowser respectively as they all share spiky shells. Both of them will be small and the blue one will have increased speed. The Bowsers will prefer using Up Smash as that's the move that uses the spikes on their shell to attack. The floor will be sticky to reference the Spike Top's main ability to stick to and climb along surfaces. The stage will be the Tower variant of Mushroom Kingdom U as these blocks remind me of something that that the spike tops would crawl along. This would be our first two-star or advanced spirit. The spiny already has a spirit in the form of the Lakitu and spiny, however we still need to make one for the spiny shellmint. This will also be a small red bowser, however this time he'll spam up special as that's his shell move. Much like the regular shellmint, a thwomp assist trophy will spawn in after a while. The stage would be Battlefield Mushroom Kingdom and this would be a novice. The blooper already has a spirit, so the blooper nanny was fairly simple. It'd be a horde battle against five light blue inklings, however one of them would be big and the other four would be small. The battle would have low gravity to represent water physics, and the stage would be Omega Delfino Plaza, making this an advanced spirit. On the topic of water enemies, we have the two cheap cheeps, green and red. I think the red and green Kirby fits them best since they're all round. The two of them would prefer jumping and also have increased jump height. This references how cheap cheeps work outside of water as they attempt to hop around and attack Mario. The stage would once again be Omega Delfino Plaza, and it'd be a novice. Gee, I wonder who uses the fighter for the fire piranha plant. 
Yeah, this would be against Isabel. Against a piranha plant, though, to have a spicy curry applied to it to reference its fire ability. Additionally, it'll prefer using back air, being piranha plants only move to reference its fire, which is honestly kind of surprising. The stage would be Mushroom Kingdom, as there's piranha plants on this stage, and it'd be an advanced spirit. The Muncher is a sort of piranha plant spin-off, so it'd be represented by a black piranha plant. Since they're almost always seen in groups, I thought having this be a horde battle would make sense. Munchers also don't really move, so I think it makes sense if they rarely move during this battle and exclusively attack using their down special. As for the stage, well, I think it's time we actually use the Mario Maker stage, which I honestly forgot exists. I put it in its battlefield variant, so this would be an advanced spirit. Monty Mole is our first enemy to be represented by DLC, in this case being a small banjo. Keep in mind for this series that I allow any DLC to be used in these spirits, since this is all just about being creative anyway. This would be a horde battle as well, with each of the banjos having increased speed due to Monty Moles generally being quite fast. Pitfalls will also be the only item to reference Monty Moles burying themselves into the ground. The stage would be Hazardless Mushroom Kingdom U, as the main area has semi-solids that the Monty Moles sometimes jump out of. This would be a novice. Now I know a lot of you will say I'm dumb for this one, but for Rocky Wrench, instead of Banjo, I did Diddy Kong in his second alt as the fighter. I chose the second alt since the white hat matches the best color-wise. The Diddy Kong would spawn with a boomerang as it's the closest item to the wrench that they throw. I know that the wrenches don't come back like boomerangs, but also who cares. The stage would be Hazardless Rainbow Cruise to represent an airship. By the way, I always call the stage Rainbow Ride because that's what it should be called since it's based on it, but whatever. If you ever hear me make the mistake, don't bully me. This would be advanced. The Sledge Bro is our first of the two exceptions to the no big enemies rule from earlier. I personally think they're different enough for me to include them. The Hammer Bro already has a spirit battle since it's an assist trophy, though I'm not actually going to be taking too much from it other than the stage being Battlefield Golden Plains and the fact that a Hammer Bro will spawn in after a while. Instead of a Yellow Yoshi, this fight will be against a Green King Dedede, as he not only has a hammer, but it's also a lot closer to the Sledge Bro's size. Additionally, the King Dedede will use up special more often than usual to reference the Sledge Bro's ground pound move. One other condition is that earthquakes will occasionally occur, which will cause the player to trip, referencing the stun from the Sludge Bros ground pound. Due to just how many conditions there are, this is our first 3 star or ace spirit. Now originally, I was going to have to do the no post chain chomp as it's an alternate form of the regular chain chomp. I was worried about it since there's no real way to differentiate the two in battle. However, if you look at the chain chomp spirit, you'll see that it doesn't have a post, meaning I don't actually have to create a spirit battle for it. Since it's named chain chomp, I also don't need to create a spirit battle for the default one. Sorry to all you no post chain chomp fans out there, but it looks like you're just gonna have to cope. Go ahead, dislike the video, I enjoy your pain specifically. Spike will be represented by K. Rool spamming neutral special. While the spike balls follow gravity in Mario you and Mario World, in the first two game styles it'll actually just float, so the cannonball from K. Rool actually fits as a spike ball. Just in case, K. Rool will also spawn with a Unira item. The stage would be the Battlefield Mario 3 variant of the Mario Maker stage, and this would be a novice. Now for the spike ball, I'm actually going to change up the fighter to be a green piranha plant. He will be given invisibility and only use neutral special as the Patui has a strong resemblance to the spike balls in Mario Maker. When invisible, it just looks like the spike ball is floating, which is perfect. Unira will also be the only item during this fight, and the stage would be Omega Super Mario Maker, making this a novice. Now, I wasn't going to include this next one, but my brother kept annoying me about it, so I guess I should talk about the snowball as well, which you get from placing a spike ball into the snow theme. This will be represented by a white Kirby on the winter variant of the Minecraft world stage, making this a novice. Yes, my brother really annoyed me for that super boring battle. Anyways, the Wiggler already has a spirit, so we can mostly recreate it for the Angry Wiggler. This would be a red Yoshi on the Yoshi's Island stage, with the lipstick being the only item. The difference between the two spirits would be that the Angry Wiggler has increased speed, making this an advanced spirit. Alright, are you all ready for a Kirby streak? No? Well, that's too bad, because we got four battles here that use him. First off, we have the Boo Stretch, which you get from placing a Boo onto the ground. These guys will basically just crawl along it, and that's it. This would be against a white Kirby on Omega Luigi's Mansion. The floor would be sticky to reference it staying on the ground, and Kirby will get invisibility to reference it being a ghost, making this a novice. The Boo Ring contains eight Boos, so this would be against eight white Kirbys that get occasional invisibility on Battlefield Luigi's Mansion, making this an advanced spirit. Okay, we've broken free from the spooky ghosts. For now. But let's take a look at the Lava Bubble. These will be wrapped by three orange Kirbys. Not only do they look similar, but Kirby's dash attack literally turns him into a fireball, so he'll spam that throughout the match. The stage will be the Lava variant of Castle Siege, and the floor would be made of lava due to the Lava Bubbles generally being near lava. This would be an advanced spirit. All right, our final Kirby, for now, represents the Lip Bomb. This will be a red Kirby on Mushroom Kingdom. He'll spawn with a Bomb, of course, but the main thing that makes this battle unique are the other conditions. Since a Lip Bomb will obviously explode after a certain amount of time, this battle requires you to defeat the Kirby within 15 seconds, or else. In order to make this actually possible, both you and Kirby will start with Hyper Set. I thought this was a pretty fun idea, and it's one of my favorites. This would be advanced. But now, it's time for the one we've all been waiting for, Dry Bones. 
Bones. That's right, he doesn't have a spirit in Smash Ultimate. When I say Dry Bones for Smash, I really just want my boy to be in the game at all. But anyway, since he's another turtle, White Squirrel will be used to represent him. He'll also spawn in with a boomerang to reference the bones Dry Bones can throw in the Mario World game style that also for some reason always break my capture card. Yeah, if anyone knows why this bone specifically causes these black lines to appear, please let me know. Like, this only happens with certain things like these bones, Mario World grinders, Heroes MP meters, so yeah, I'd like to know how to fix this. Continuing on, the Squirtle will have auto heal to reference Dry Bones' ability to revive himself upon getting hit. The stage would be the tower variant of Mushroom Kingdom U, since Dry Bones are generally found in towers, and this would be a legendary spirit. Okay. He'll just be advanced, I guess. That's not technically the end of our boy, though, as we still have to cover the Dry Bone Shell. This is also a white Squirtle, though this time it's spam side special. Now, the Dry Bone Shell's gimmick is protecting you from below, so instead of a thwomp, the floor will be made of lava here, since Dry Bone Shells can be used to ride across it. The stage would also be Omega Norfair to reference a lava-filled castle. Still really disappointed that there's no Bowser's Castle stage in Smash. This would be a novice. Our final character part of the Bony Boy family is the Fish Bones. This time, we aren't going to use Squirtle, but instead a white Sonic. While it does look somewhat similar, the main reason we're using him is because he'll spam his neutral special homing attack. The Fishbone's main gimmick is homing in on Mario when they see him, so this made the most sense for me. This would also be a horde battle against three of them, and they'd all be made small. Finally, the stage would be Battlefield Delfino Plaza, specifically Battlefield, as I like the idea of having the platforms to block the Fishbone's attacks, as that's exactly how they're defeated in the games. This would be an advanced spirit. The Pokey was fairly difficult for me to come up with. There's surprisingly no cactuses on the Smash roster. In the end, I decided to go with a Pac-Man horde, each one representing part of the Pokey. The stage would be Omega Mushroomy Kingdom since that's the closest to the desert. Now to make them more cactus-like, I gave each of the Pac-Man impact runs so that they damage you upon contact. I know that that might not be the best solution, but that's what I came up with. This would be an advanced spirit. Much like the Spike Ball, the Pokey's also got a snow variant in the form of the creatively named Snow Pokey. This would be a horde battle against White Pac-Man on the snow variant of the Minecraft world stage, making this a novice. Now, one thing that annoys me about the current spirit battles is the fact that the Mecha Koopa battle uses yellow Bowsers. That would be fine if it weren't for the fact that Bowser Jr. literally has a move that spawns Mecha Koopas. So I'll be using Bowser Jr. for the alternate Mecha Koopa forms. For the blasted Mecha Koopa, it'll be Roy since his clown car matches the color best, and he'll mostly spam down special. He'll also spawn with a bob bomb and explosives will be the only item to reference the blasted part of the blasted Mecha Koopa's name. The stage would be Rainbow Cruise to represent an airship where most Mecha Koopas can be located, and this would be advanced. For the Zappa Mecha Koopas, it'll be very similar. However, instead of Roy, it'll be Larry since the colors match better and his haircut kind of looks like the Zappa Mecha Koopas. Instead of a bob bomb Larry will spawn with a staff, the closest thing to the Zappa Mecha Koopas straight on electrical shop. The stage is the same as the last battle, making this an advanced spirit. The Angry Sun will be rep by Pac-Man. He'll prefer using side special since it can be kind of used to replicate the Angry Sun's swooping motion during gameplay. Speaking of, Pac-Man will get his final smash during this battle as that loops around the stage in a somewhat similar way. Hotheads will be the only item during this fight since they look like suns and the battle will take place on Battlefield Super Mario Maker, making this an ace spirit. Now I completely forgot the moon existed until my brother reminded me. To be fair, nobody uses this thing, it's basically completely worthless. This will also be Pac-Man since if you squint, he kind of looks like he's in the shape of a moon. For the same reason as the sun, he'll spam side special and the stage will be Omega Balloon Fight since it kind of looks like it's in nighttime, making this a novice. So for Lakitu's Cloud, I could have used White Kirby for the 4 billionth time, but I decided to try and change it up by using Jigglypuff. She'd be extra floaty and have an increased jump height as well. The stage would be Omega Magic Camp because Cloud and this would be a novice. But dang it, I should've used Cloud as the fighter. The clown car was super easy. It'll be repped by Bowser Jr. since he obviously rides it. He'll be extra floaty, and the only items will be shells of a bomb since those are the items that Bowser and Bowser Jr. throw out if they're in clown cars. This would be on Hazardless Rainbow Cruise and would be a novice. The fire clown car would be against Roy since he has the closest looking clown car and he'd have the curry to represent the fire. Otherwise, everything else is the same as the last, making this advanced. Now that would have been the last one, but of course, now we have to talk about the 3D World exclusive enemies. The ant troopers are kind of similar to the spike top in the way that they're able to crawl on surfaces. I decided to make you go against two purple Yoshi here, one representing the standard ant trooper and the other one being the spiked version. The spiked one would spawn in with a Unira item since I can't really think of any other way to represent it being spiked. The floor would be sticky and the only items would be the bumpers to represent the ant troopers being bouncy. This would be on Battlefield Mushroomy Kingdom since the ant troopers are usually found in the desert and this would be a novice. Okay, I'm honestly way more proud of this next one than I should be. So I knew for the Skip Squeak and Spiky Skip Squeak I'd use Pichu since he's a filthy rat. What that means though is I can have the main Skip Squeak be represented by normal Pichu and the Spiky one represented by Spiky Ear Pichu. I was very happy with how that worked out. Since the Skip Squeak's main gimmick is jumping, the Pichus will spend most of the battle doing just that. The stage would be Omega Peach's castle since it reminds me the most of the 3D World Sky theme and this would be another novice. Now somehow almost every episode has had a B-Spirit battle. I mean of the four episodes we've done so far, three of them have had a B-Spirit battle. Lucky for 
for me, there isn't a B character in Five Nights at Freddy's. Yet. But anyways, we're going to do the exact same thing we always do. This will be a horde of small yellow Ridleys on Battlefield Golden Plains, with beehives being the only item, making this a novice. The Piranha Creeper and the Funny Say Psych Right Now Piranha Creeper are secondary forms of the Piranha Plant, so they're obviously represented by pink and blue ones. They'll both be made big since the Piranha Creepers are, and they'll spam down special since the Piranha Creepers' whole gimmick is about them stretching. I made the stage Congo Jungle since it's the closest to a jungle stage where these two would be found. This would be advanced. The Fire Bro and Heavy Fire Bro will be represented by Mario spamming Neutral B. I hope it's obvious why. One of them will be made big, and earthquakes will occur to represent the ground pound stun. The stage would be Battlefield Summit, which may seem like an odd choice for fire characters, but these guys are often found in ice stages in order to melt the ice. Take the infamous 9-7 as an example of that, so I thought this stage was the most fitting. These guys would be an ace spirit. The hop chop was actually surprisingly easy, as a green rob fits it pretty well. Due to it being a spring, it'll have an increased jump height. The stage would be Battlefield 3D Land since it's the most mechanical Mario stage, and he'd be a novice. The Peepa is our final ghost enemy, but since I didn't want to use another white Kirby, and since the Peepas do look somewhat different from Boo's, I went with the white Meta Knight being the fighter here. He'll of course get occasional invisibility, and the stage will be Battlefield Luigi's Mansion. As for the special condition, hammers would be the only items to spawn in because... Okay, no, but seriously, the condition would be that the Pac-Man ghosts will spawn after a while, since their designs closely resemble the Peepas. This would be a novice. I'm going to skip the character that would normally be next so that we can end on a high note, so let's take a look at Charvard. This guy's gimmick is all about coming out of the lava and returning back to it, which I think is best represented by Incineroar spamming his up special, so that's who the opponent will be. The Incineroar will also be made big, and the floor would be lava as well. The stage would be the lava variant of Castle Siege, and this would be an ace spirit. The bullies have always been one of my favorite enemies, and luckily their fight wasn't all too hard. A black King K. Rule works best here, and he'd have impact run due to the bullies trying their best to run into the player in order to knock them away. The stage would be the same as the last battle, as it reminds me the most of Lethal Lava Land, the bully's most iconic stage. I also wanted to have bumpers be the only item, since bumping each other around is the whole point of the bullies, but for whatever reason, they just can't spawn on this stage. Anyways, this is an advanced spirit. The Porka Puffer will be represented by a big purple DDD who spams in hail, obviously referencing the Porka Puffer's main form of attack. The stage would be specifically this part of Delfino Plaza, since I think it looks the most like a stage where a Porka Puffer would be, and this would be an ace spirit. Now honestly, while writing this, I noticed that I didn't need to actually make one for the Koopa Trooper car, since there's a spirit battle for a Koopa that's in a cart already, but 45 spirit battle sounds a lot better than 44, so here's the Koopa Trooper car. It'll be Bowser Jr. who spams side specials, since that puts him in the car, and the stage would be figure 8 circuit, making this a novice. Now our final, and probably my favorite spirit battle of this video, we have Meowser. You know, it's kind of funny how my least favorite enemy is getting my favorite battle, but to be fair, this is entirely based on his 3D World boss fight, not how he works in Mario Maker 2. Obviously, Bowser will be the main character you need to fight against, though he'd be made big to better fit Meowser's size. In addition, he'll get the Tanuki Leaf since it's the closest thing I could find to making him look like a cat. During the fights, more Bowsers will spawn in after a while to reference Meowser using the Double Cherry during his boss fight, so you'll only need to defeat the main one to win though. The only items to spawn during this fight will be the POW block, as that's what's used to defeat Meowser, and also, very rarely, the Fairy Bottle, as that's what Meowser is holding during the boss fight. Finally, for the stage, I went with New Donk City Hall, as it travels up a tall tower, exactly like the boss fight in 3D World. I think it goes without saying that this would be a legendary spirit, just due to how much is here. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you all mad I didn't make a battle for the Galoomba, even though it'd be the exact same as the Goomba? Let me know in the comments. Before I go, I wanted to address the comments I get a lot on these types of videos, and that's why don't I just make some of these battles evolutions to other spirits, especially the ones that are somewhat similar. My answer to that is... Well, that's very boring. Who wants to watch a video of me just saying, yeah, just make the Goombrat an evolution of the Goomba? The point of the series is meant to challenge creativity, even when it may seem like there's not much to work with. With that said, I really enjoyed making this episode. The Mario enemies are probably the characters I'm most familiar with in this series, maybe besides the Minecraft mobs, but generally, I had a lot going for me this episode. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, then make sure to leave a like. It really does help a lot. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.